extreme ultraviolet, EUV, light. This wavelength is already in the nanometer range. So, what exactly is going on here? Well, it's all about photolithography, specifically the working principle of a photolithography machine. It uses light to etch transistors onto a silicon wafer, hence the name photolithography. You see, the energy of the light used in this process is inversely related to its wavelength. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the energy. And the smaller the transistors it can create on the silicon wafer. As a result, you can fit more transistors into a unit area, making the chip more powerful. EUV light has an extremely short wavelength, making it suitable for producing chips with features as small as 7 nanometers. ASML, a company from the Netherlands, is known for manufacturing EUV lithography machines. However, due to certain reasons, these EUV machines are not available to everyone. Now, Tsinghua University has come up with a solution, taking a completely different approach to harnessing EUV light. Since photolithography relies on light, the first step is to have a light source that can emit EUV light. But it's not just about emitting any EUV light, the quality of this EUV light is crucial. Firstly, the intensity of the light must be high enough because it needs to be used to etch patterns on the silicon wafer. So, it needs to be strong. Secondly, the wavelength must be stable. What does that mean? We know that, due to the uncertainty principle of quantum mechanics, no light source emits a single, constant wavelength. It always has a distribution, known as the bandwidth. In the context of photolithography, you want your light knife to be sharp. In terms of EUV light quality, this translates to good monochromaticity. The wavelength should not be too spread out, the bandwidth should be narrow. The focus of Tsinghua University's EUV solution is to generate high-quality EUV light with sufficient intensity, and excellent monochromaticity through an entirely new approach. How do they achieve this? Well, they think big. They use an accelerator. You see, ASML sells their lithography machines all over the world, so they have to be transportable and not too large. But if you're just producing high-quality EUV light for your own use and don't need to transport it, size is not an issue. We are familiar with particle accelerators, and the largest one in the world, the LHC, is in Switzerland, with a circumference of over 30 kilometers. To draw a comparison, it's like using the electricity stored in a battery versus connecting to a power plant. You can't move a power plant around, but you can transport electricity stored in batteries. Tsinghua's EUV solution can be thought of as building a light factory instead of a light pool like ASML. So, how do they do it? Well, you'll need to dive into the original research paper for that. Fortunately, it's a Chinese paper titled Steady State Microbunching Accelerated Light Source, abbreviated as SSMB. According to Maxwell's equations, when electrons undergo acceleration, they emit electromagnetic waves. Electrons in an accelerator are constrained by magnetic fields to move in circular paths within a storage ring. When they move in circles, they accelerate, and that's when they radiate electromagnetic waves. In other words, to emit EUV light, you need electrons with sufficiently high acceleration and energy. But remember, we don't want just one EUV photon, we want a high-intensity, monochromatic EUV beam. To achieve this, we can't rely on a single electron's acceleration. We need a bunch of electrons to accelerate in concert inside the accelerator, forming a high-quality EUV light beam. However, there's a challenge, controlling the spread of electrons. If electrons are too spread out, the emitted light will also be dispersed, and the electrons won't move uniformly. This affects the monochromaticity of the emitted light. So, how do you control the spread of electrons? They use an array of laser-generated potential wells. In simple terms, they start with a series of loosely focused electrons, allowing them to enter a laser array. Through the interaction between the laser and electrons, these electrons get bunched together in small clusters at the peaks and troughs of the laser's wave pattern. These clustered electrons, arranged at intervals equal to the laser's wavelength, create a stable electron current. As a result, the emitted light becomes stable as well. This method addresses the longitudinal divergence of electrons. As for the transverse divergence, it involves a mechanism where the longitudinal motion of electrons influences their lateral movement ultimately constraining the electron bunch to a nanometer scale range. In summary, this approach is groundbreaking, thinking beyond traditional frameworks. 
It's not just about getting light. It's about creating it in a way that can provide high-quality EUV light over a broad wavelength range, thanks to the massive accelerator. Theoretically, this opens up the possibility of achieving very short wavelengths, 